Hello students, welcome to Legacy IS Academy. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the concept of guerrilla warfare. What is the method that is adopted by the people who are using guerrilla warfare? What are the examples from India as well as all across the world where such warfare has been waged in the past and also in the contemporary and present times and how effective it is to have a kind of revolution or achieve its stated goals or objective. So let us first try to understand that what or how can we define guerrilla warfare. So in military terms, it is defined as a warfare or war that is waged by civilians in general against the members of traditional military unit such as nation's standing army as well as the police force of the nation. In many cases, guerrilla combatants are fighting to overthrow or weaken a ruling government or regime. And this type of warfare is mainly characterized by activities that is sabotage, ambushes, as well as surprise attacks and raid on the unsuspecting military targets. This you might have come uh, across in uh, news many times if you are following the news related to Naxal activities because Naxals in India also follow similar kind of tactics where they suddenly attack on the battalion of CRPF or the police personnel that is employed in Naxal infested areas. And for example, in year 2010, when you have one of the most severe uh, impact of the Naxal violence has been seen on the CRPF battalion when 75 CRPF personnel were killed in the Dante Vara region of Chhattisgarh. That was the example of guerrilla warfare. Overall, what we can say that the people who are engaged in guerrilla warfare often are fighting in their own homeland or we can say in their own country, own nation. And the guerrilla combatants, which are also many times referred as rebels or insurgents, use the familiarity of the area, use the familiarity of the local landscape and terrain to their advantage. So this is overall basic introduction of the guerrilla warfare. Now if you go to understand the history of this particular uh, type of warfare, we can trace the history to 6th century BC when we have the book, a most notable or the most famous book on the military practice has been written by a Chinese general, Sun Tzu. The book is called as Art of War. And it is in this book, The Art of War, where he have for the first time mentioned the tactic of guerrilla warfare. Later on, in the 3rd century BC, we have a famous Roman dictator and as well as Roman military general by the name of Quintus Fabius Maximus. And Quintus Fabius Maximus has employed guerrilla warfare in various war that he waged against a different different uh, empire which threatened the Roman Empire. And that is why it is Quintus Fabius Maximus who is considered as the father of guerrilla warfare. And his tactics is sometimes also referred as Fabius, Fabius, Fabiasm. So Fabiasm is a kind of guerrilla warfare tactics that was employed by the Roman general. Later on, in the 18th century, we see the similar kind of tactics that has been employed by the people and civilians of Portugal and Spain when Napoleon's superior French army was engaged in peninsular warfare in Europe and wanted to have uh, wanted to have occupation over the Spain and Portugal. So they are also the people of Spain and Portugal uh, obtained large success mainly because of the falling of guerrilla warfare tactics. So this is some of the historical examples and the origin of this particular warfare. Now we come to more closer to our time period. It is in year 1952 when we see a success of guerrilla warfare during the Cuban revolution. The Cuban revolution was a revolution against the existing government of Cuba, which was largely believed to be a puppet government of United States of America. And that is why we have a Cuban leader, Fidel Castro, who later on also became the president of Cuba, along with the uh, communist revolutionary, you might know about Che Guevara, they both waged a guerrilla warfare against the existing government led by Batista uh, and that is when they overthrew the government. Then further, we can see in 1970s when we have a fight going on between communism and capitalism uh, between USA and the northern Vietnam where the communist leader Ho Chi Minh was leading the forces against USA. There also his troops were engaged in a kind of guerrilla warfare tactics against the American forces. And it is due to this region we can see that American forces finally defeated, got defeated and have to withdraw from Vietnam without attaining or obtaining any significant result. And as we have discussed, similar kind of warfare tactics has also been adopted by Naxals in India who want to have a communist based revolution and want to overthrow the democratically elected uh, leaders or democratic elected government in India. So that is all about the history of guerrilla warfare. Now the question comes that why such strategies are adopted. So first of all, we have to understand what is the aim of this strategy. The main aim or objective 
of such kind of strategy being adopted by the civilian population is mainly is believed to be a desperate struggle of a common people to right the wrongs done to them by the existing as well as the previous government. However, this is not always a right, uh, we can say, uh, right uh, reason behind the guerrilla warfare. To understand the guerrilla strategy, we have to refer to the statement given by Che Guevara, where he says that we must come to the inevitable conclusion that the guerrilla fighter is a social reformer, that he takes up arms responding to the angry protest of people against their operations, and then it, that fights in order to change the social system that keeps all his unarmed brothers in ignominy and misery. So overall, if we talk about the revolutionaries, the main we can say leaders of guerrilla warfare, what we can see that they are justifying this warfare because they are facing a very asymmetric enemy. They are facing the whole state political uh, power. They are facing the military and the state police. And that is why they cannot win or wage a conventional war against them because then they will be easily defeated. And that is the reason why they adopt a guerrilla warfare strategy so they can inflict maximum damage on the state agencies without suffering a huge casualty and huge damage in their cadre or in their organization. Now, due to various diverse, uh, we can say, uh, diverse stages are there, diverse examples are there where guerrilla, guerrilla warfare strategy has been adopted. Many times they are considered as villain and many times they are also considered as a hero of the local people. For example, if we take about, talk about villain, so when the Irish Republican army carried out terror attacks, engaged in guerrilla warfare against the uh, British, that was considered as a villainous approach because a lot of innocent civilians were also killed in a collateral damage or as a collateral damage. On the other hand, many times guerrilla war, uh, we can say guerrilla fighters are also considered as hero. For example, in South America, you have Che Guevara, you have Fidel Castro because it is believed or people at least believe that they are fighting for a just cause. And what can be the just cause? It is to secure the basic human rights as well as they are fighting against the injustice and operation of the existing government, existing reason. So depending on that, what is the aim and objective of the guerrilla uh, soldiers or guerrilla war, uh, warfare, the guerrilla warriors can be considered both as a villain as well as hero. So how can we define the warfare tactics of the guerrillas? So this can be traced back again to the book that we have discussed in the beginning of the discussion. The book is called as The Art of War, written by a Chinese general in 6th century Sun Tzu. Here he says that know when to fight and when not to fight. Avoid what is strong and strike at what is weak. And know how to deceive the enemy. And here he says, interestingly, that appear weak when you are strong and strong when you are Weak. So this is something, it is a very bold statement, this is a very important statement because this is something that is considered as the basic principle or maxim of guerrilla warfare. And interestingly, this strategy is not outdated. This is something that even in modern time, Chinese military, Chinese leadership follows to the core. And in Chinese military strategy, military surprise and strategic deception that is inherent in their doctrine can also be traced back to the Sanju's art of war. Apart from that, uh, based on this maxim, then how the actual warfare is carried out. So, guerrilla warfare, they repeat, carry out repeated surprise attacks, hit and run attacks. They attack enemy supply line facilities like bridges, railroads, and airfields. They rarely wear in uniform or identify themselves with any insignia because then the element of surprise will not be there. Suddenly, they look like civilian and then the police personnel, security personnel are not very careful. Suddenly, they can jump, suddenly can spring up from the bushes, spring up from the forest and can kill and cause a lot of casualty of the state uh, police personnel. And also, they employ both military as well as political arm, political arm to have support of the local people and military to basically repel or basically attack against the state government. Now, the very interesting point what we have to understand here is that there's a difference, a strong difference between guerrilla warfare and terrorism. Many times both are equated similarly, but there is certain differences between guerrilla warfare and the terrorism. So what are the differences? First of all, if you talk about guerrilla warriors, they tend to attack defended military targets as well as security personnel, as you see in the case of attack carried out by Naxals against the CRPA personnel. On the other hand, Terrorists rarely attack defended military targets. They rather prefer soft targets such as crowded areas, such as civilian targets and all this kind of thing. Second, guerrilla warfare or guerrilla, uh, guerrilla warriors generally are driven by political factors. Such as in case of India, they want to overthrow the existing government to have a communist utopian state. On the other hand, terrorists are driven by religious or a sense of hatred against any particular community. 
थर्ड गुरिल्ला वॉरियर्स रेयरली अटैक सिविलियंस because their whole operation is based on the goodwill and support of local population and that is why they cannot alienate the civilian population by attacking them on the other hand terrorists want to create a sense of panic fear distrust and that is why they easily and uh, preferably attack the civilian targets and the last difference is that guerrilla warriors did not they have main intention uh, attention of seizing the territory as well as the enemy equipment on the other hand terrorists do not have such motive they just want to create a sense of panic and fear so these are the major differences between guerrilla warriors and the terrorists so what are the examples we can quote about the guerrilla warfare from the past and present so overall if you look at the entire history if you look at the different different ideologies that have come into existence such as liberty equality nationalism socialism as well as religious fundamentalism fundamentalism it has motivated large group of people to employ guerrilla warfare tactics to achieve their religious political or ideological goal and through this they have made lot of efforts to overcome real or imagined operation threat or persecution at the hands of a ruling government or foreign invaders so three examples we can quote which is where the guerrilla warfare has been seen in a very uh, intense uh, where intense conflict has happened and guerrilla warfare has been used so one was in the 17th century we have boer war in south africa boer war was a war between the british colonialist british army as well as the dutch settlers and dutch settlers were called as boer and they wanted to have a basically what we can say they wanted to have a control over two regions which were under the control of british army in the south africa and that is when they have waged a guerrilla war second we can stand in south america we have nicaraguan contra war contras were basically uh, what we can say uh, the revolutionaries who were against the concept or ideology of communism and that is why they wanted to topple the marxist government of that time which was led by sandinista in the state of or the country of nicaragua so this also was a kind of proxy war between soviet union which was ardent supporter of communism and united states of america which was ardent supporter of capitalism so usa was backing this nicaraguan contras on the other hand soviet union was backing the marxist sandinist government however at the end both the uh, both armies have to uh, cease uh, their hostility cease their hostility and then we have finally the war that has ended third we can understand is the soviet invasion of afghanistan in 1969 uh, 1979 when soviet union invaded the afghanistan that time mujahideens that were the guerrilla fighters of afghanistan they were fighting they were a group of local tribesmen who initially fought the soviet troops with outdated old weaponries later on against this also became a kind of proxy war between soviet union and united states of america and usa funded these mujahideens of afghanistan and osama bin laden was one of the mujahideens who were fighting uh with uh, or with the support of usa against the soviet union and that is how you can understand that why all this war on terror and later on the attack that has happened in united states of america because once the soviets uh, withdraw from the afghanistan this mujahideens do not have any other enemy and that is why they turned their gaze toward usa and thus osama bin laden became the main perpetrator of the 911 attack so the history can be traced back to this particular invasion so these are the some notable examples of guerrilla warfare in india as we have discussed the naxals are mainly engaged in guerrilla warfare because they uh, they have this uh, uh, what we can say uh, goal of having a protected warfare with the state they are working or they are fighting against the asymmetric um, power that is the whole state government as well as central government of india and that is why they try to achieve their objective by carrying out low scale guerrilla attacks so this is all about this particular topic if you like the video please hit the like button share it with your friends as well as subscribe to our channel for more helpful content thank you very much